Welcome to Trig. <laughs> so the first part of Trig is, did you know that Trig has to do with circles? Yes. Not triangles. Yes. Actually, it has to do with triangles, too. It's both. Okay, so we are looking at circles today, however. We're not going to get to triangles yet. So the first thing we want to look at is magnitudes of rotation and measures of arcs. So the first thing you need to know is a rotation... is a transformation under which each point in the plane turns a fixed magnitude around a fixed point called a called the center of rotation. So it's kind of like holding a string in one spot and moving the, the end of the string around. So basically you make a circle if you were to draw that out or using a compass. Okay, so, revolutions and de degrees, there is a way to describe how much A has been rotated to get to B. Since the measure, you guys, if you ever see this, it's M, little m, angle, that's the measure of the angle of AQB is 50 degrees, the magnitude... of the rotation is 50 degrees. When rotations are measured in this way, the rotation of 360 degrees is called one revolution. A revolution of 180 degrees is called a half turn. And a rotation of 90 degrees is called a quarter turn. Okay, so 360 is a full turn, 180 is a half turn, 90 degrees is a quarter turn. You could also rotate B 50 degrees clockwise to get A. So right here on this picture, they're actually going counterclockwise, but they're saying you could actually go the other direction. The clockwise direction is the negative direction in trigonometry. Because the four quadrants are number clockwise order. So if you think about the quadrants in a Cartesian axis, here's quadrant one, here's two, here's three, and here's four. So, the same goes for trig, we're going counterclockwise order. So the rotation that maps B to A is said to be a negative 50 degree rotation, or to have a magnitude of negative 50 degrees. All right, so you can multiply both sides of the co uh, conversion equation. One revolution equal to 360 degrees to find how many degrees are in multi any multiple of revolution, okay? So, for instance, this one is a one-eighth revolution counterclockwise. So, you're going to take one-eighth times 360, and one-eighth of 360 is 45 degrees. So, that's a 45-degree angle. A two-thirds revolution clockwise is going to be two-thirds... And this time we're timesing it by negative 360 because it's going the other direction. Okay? And the way I like to do that is I think about 360 divided by 3 times 2. So that would be negative 240 degrees. So you're like, so going counterclockwise and positive mm -hmm. clockwise is negative? Correct. 
Yep. And on this one, one and one fourth revolution counterclockwise. Well, if I were to change this from a mixed fraction to an improper fraction, that's going to be five fourths. Okay, times 360, and it's positive because it's going counterclockwise. Well, 4 goes into 360 90 times, and 90 times 5 is 450. Okay, so notice that it's going more than 360, it's so it is definitely more than one rotation. Can you guys think of any place in real life that you talk about more than one rotation. Snowboarding. Snowboarding. Sean yeah, Sean White. Okay, yeah. so we commonly have a 360 turn. What are some other turns that we have? 540. Yeah, okay. <laughs> My niece is on track to be an Olympic figure skater, and she's working on her triples right now. So she knows all about those turns, too. Okay. Radian measure. You're going to want to turn the page. In a rotation, points that are farther from the center move or turn at a greater distance along the arc of the circle. That of the circle that than points that are closer to the center. Do you guys ever remember riding on a merry-go-round? Okay, so if you were at the very middle of the merry-go-round, what were you basically doing? Yeah, you were basically spinning right in the center. But if you were on the outside, what kind of a feeling was that? You're going fast. But did you feel the force? It feels like you're getting whipped out, right? It's because you're you're going really fast. You're going a greater distance. What kind of thing was all up there? Oh, those are teeter totters. No, Oh, really? The horse moves up and down. Oh, you're thinking about those. I'm thinking about the ones that you actually run along on the playground. Yeah, that's. So, measuring a rotation in degrees does not tell us anything about how far a point has moved. To solve this problem, a unit is needed that is related to the length of the arc. This unit is called the radian. Remember that if a, center, if a circle has a radius of r, its circumference is what? No, that's that area. R. 2 pi r, yes. We distinguish between 360 and 2 pi r because 360 degrees is arc measure. And 2 pi r is arc length. Okay, so the, we were just talking about arc measure versus arc length. Okay, so a unit circle has a circumference of 2 pi. Do you guys see why? Poet didn't know it. Because r is equal to 1, so it's just 2 pi. And we're looking at unit circles most of the time in trip. Is that unit circle the one where we had to learn all the stuff that yes, goes around? Yes, and there? you will be learning that, that again. Like okay. Okay, let's just tell you right now. Okay, so if I were to yeah. actually multiply this out, 2 times 3.14 approximately is 6.28. Can you just round to 6.5? No, we're going we're gonna to leave it at so two digits, sorry. okay? So considering point A on a circle O, that mo maps A onto P. In this drawing, the arc AP is a three eighths of a circle. Okay. Okay. So the length of AP is three eighths of the circumference. So 
So if I wanted to find what exactly that circumference is of 3 eighths, I'm going to take 3 eighths times 2 pi, which is approximately 3 pi over 4. And if I were to actually put that in my calculator, I get 2.36 about. Okay. So notice that the measure of AOP is 135 degrees. So 135 degrees corresponds to 3 pi over 4 radians. So do you do... Okay, so it's important to note that a full turn is 2 pi. A half turn? 1 pi. 1 pi or just pi. And a quarter turn? Pi. Pi over 2. Pi over 2. Oh, okay. Do we have pi day still? We yeah, can. It still exists. Are you going to give us pi if we memorize it? So just like when adding or subtracting multiples of 360 to the ma uh, magnitude of rotation that gives equivalent rotation, the same can be true with 2 pi radians. Okay? So if I say I had 4 pi radians, how many times did I go in the circle? Six. Two. Twice. Right? Wait, say that again? Basically, I'm saying that if I... Oh, you went around twice. Yeah, if I say 6 pi, how many times did I go around? Three. Yep. So when I said 360 before and I multiplied that by 2, it was 540, right? Right. So that would be twice. It's the same kind of thought in, okay. in place. Sure. Okay, so using the following conversion formula, we're going to convert from degrees to radians. Okay? Really simple. You can go either conversion, either this one. Oh, I remember doing that. Yeah. Or you can use this one. Which one's easier? Well, they're both the same. It depends on which one you're converting to. So if we're converting to radians, we're going to use this one. If we're going to convert to degrees, we're going to use this one. Okay? So let's convert 30 degrees to radians. We're going to go 30 degrees times pi radians. Uh huh. Over 180. Okay. So this would be basically like saying 30 pi over 180. Correct. Yes. I can reduce that fractions because uh, the 30 goes into both, so it's going to be pi over six. All right, so now we got a little activity here. We're supposed to fill in the table, fill in the blanks. Okay? So thinking about your entire table, you know that at zero degrees, if it hasn't gone anywhere, how many revolutions have I gone? Zero. Zero. So are we going to do this by ourselves? Or are we I'm just going to talk it through right now. Okay, so if I went 30 degrees, okay, so 30 over 360 is how much? Mm -hmm. Well, no. 112. Okay. Wait, 30 over 160? 30 over 160 is how I found this. Why did you do 160? I'm not, I mean 360. Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, 1 eighth. 1 eighth times 360 is what? 45, and that's what's, what goes here. Okay. So if I've gone pi thir over 3, this is the same thing as saying 60 degrees, and this is 1 6. Oh, 1 Yep. Yep, yes, you should see a pattern. Yeah, it goes up by 30 and then 15 and then 30. Yep. Okay. So then 120 is the same as saying 2 pi over 3 or 1 third. 
And then 3 eighths is the same as saying 3, 135. And then we have 5 pi over 6 and 5 twelfths. And then 2 pi is our complete rotation. I like looking at the entire circle. You guys, if we look at quarter circles, those are 90 degrees, right? Okay, so this is like a one-fourth rotation. That makes sense because you ate a quarter of the slice of the pie. Okay? And then if you were to break it down right here, that's 45 degrees. So it's kind of sometimes easier, I think, to look in pictures than it is in the entire table here. But then we have, we break it down into thirds and sixes. This is 30. 60. So you guys get an idea of what's going on here. We can do that all the way around. We're going to get more into that later. All right, to convert any rotation, use the conversion formula of n degrees over 360. To convert anything to radians, any degrees to radians, you use pi over 180. And the other way from radians degrees, like I said a little while ago, is 180 over pi. So, example 1A says convert 1,000 degrees to radians exactly. So I'm going to take 1,000 and I'm going to multiply that by pi over 180. Yep, 1,000 pi over 180. And already I can just get rid of one of the zeros by dividing them both by 10, right? So I have 100 pi over 18. How else can I reduce this? Two. Divided by 2, so then I have 50 pi over 9. And that's my final answer. So that was converting exactly. You want to leave it in pi form. Okay? Leave it in uh, fraction form. Now, I want to take this and actually put it into my calculator and convert it into an approximation. So what you get out of your calculator is actually an approximation. So if you were to do that, you're going to end up with 17.5 radians. So should we always do the little squiggly? A fraction like this is an exact amount. <coughs> a decimal is actually an approximation because you're rounding. Okay. okay. So now it says convert 42 to radians exactly. So we're going to take 42 times pi over 180 and just make it into a fraction. So what can I reduce it by? Um, two. Two, first of all, right? Two goes into 42. 22, or, ooh, 21. 21 times. Can I reduce it one more time? Three. Yeah, by three. So three goes into 21 by seven. And three goes into 90 by 30. So that's my exact amount of radians. So then you do 7, or 7 pi over 30 is approximately mm -hmm. So if you put that in your calculator, you're going to end up with 0 0.73 radians. Okay, a couple more conversions here. We're going to just convert 1 radian to your degrees. So if I go 1 rad times 180 divided by pi, I'm just going to end up with 180 over pi. Okay, so this is my exact amount, but what if I want to convert it to my approximate amount? Then you just do it. Yeah, do it in your calculator. So it will be 57.3 degrees. Okay, same thing here. 28.8 radians 
times 180 over pi. Okay, and so if I actually do the approximation, it's going to be 100, uh, 1,650 degrees. Let me double check that. That doesn't seem right to me. No, I was right. Okay, so let's go to the next page. We're almost done. All right, so we are going to find the length of an arc of a 50 degree central angle in a circle with a radius of six. Now we're not dealing with a unit circle. Now we are dealing with a circle that has six in its radius. So first thing we need to do is find out the portion of the circle that we're dealing with. So we're going to take 50 divided by 360. Then we're going to multiply that by the circumference of the circle. So that's 2 pi r, correct? Mm -hmm. So it'll be times 2 times pi times 6, because I'm replacing that r by the radius of 6. Why are you multiplying by 2 pi? <coughs> because you're going to multiply by the radius. Yep, we're multiplying by the radius, because we're trying to find this, the portion of the circle for that. Here, let me draw a picture. Yeah, I draw a picture too. Okay, so I have a radius of 6. And it says it's 50 degrees, so it's something like this. Mm -hmm. We want to find out just this amount just of the, the circle, little the little arc. Okay. So in order to do that, I need to know the circumference of the entire circle, but multiply it by that fraction. So you took 50 over 360? Yep. 50 over 360. Times, but I don't understand what 2 pi means. 2 pi r. Two pi. This is the portion oh. of the circumference. Okay. Okay, so on this, I have, if I were to actually multiply this through, I have 600 divided by 360 pi, which is the same thing as saying 5 thirds pi, but if I went directly, this would be 5.24 feet. 5.24 feet is about how long that arc is. Okay, let's do it again. Let's find the length of a 20, a 200 degree arc with a radius of 10.5. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take 200 degrees of 360. Okay, so here's my circle. This time I've got a, a radius of 10.5. Okay, 200 degrees is going to be somewhere around here. So I'm looking for the arc length. So you take 200 divided by 360 yep. times 2 pi um, 10.5? Yep, times 2 times pi Equals times 10.5. If you put that in your calculator, it's going to be an approximation of 36.7 feet. We want to find the arc length when we're dealing with radians instead of um, the other way. Instead of dealing with degrees, we're dealing with radians this time. Okay. So we are going to use this formula. S is the length of the arc equal to the number of radians times the um, amount, the, times the radius times the central angle <coughs> in radians, okay? So on this one, we have a, a swing hangs from chains that are eight feet long. So if I have my swing, it's hanging down from up here. And you can kind of think of it as swinging back and forth. This is eight feet right here. Okay? And it says, how far does the swing seat travel, oh, sorry, how far does the seat of the swing travel if it moves through an angle of 1.25 radians? So we're going to take S equals eight times 1.25 and multiply that out and you get about 10 feet. That one's not hard, is it? Okay, so referring to 4A, if the rope is shortened to 7 feet, how far would it swing? So you do 7 times 1.5. Yep, 7 times 1.5. And you end up with 
10.5 feet. Why did it get long? Yeah, why did it get long? Because they are using a bigger angle. See this? 1.5 versus 